But if the relationship was so great, why did you guys break up? That's from Luigi1339. I'll answer that question. Go ahead. You were going through a lot of your things and going through a transition because you were working in the house, you know, house, like, what was it called again? House yeah, I was network. renovating a house in the lake and then I no, was, yeah. and then there were changes in the market and then there was different business partners and was trying mm. to adjust the business model. And then I, what was interesting is 2000, February 2004, my first trip, my platinum partner trip with Tony Robbins, we were in Malta. Mm. And I was watching Tony do a therapeutic intervention with one of the, my female um, platinum partners. And I was amazed at how he, this woman, just her physiology, her body language, her voice, she was in tears. She was having a meltdown and just totally transformed her in like this 30, 45 minute process. And I remember watching it. I was just thinking internally, something said, I want to learn to do that. That was like the mm. coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life at that point. And at that point, my heart was going in a different direction, mm. but my mind mentally, I'm still, I'm this real estate guy. And my focus was building and growing that business. And then, you know, you got changes in the market, kind of like what's going on now. You had dramatic increase in the interest rates and it just completely chilled off the real estate market. And it made it very hard the way our business model was set up to be and remain profitable. And it just, it wasn't until about a year, well, it's about a, a year later mm -hmm. that, you know, this is like end of 2005. So it was almost two years later where I was just like, I thought this something that I had picked up in self-help and it said, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? And if you had to start all over and do something else, what would you do? If you knew you couldn't fail. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that popped in my mind was an image of one of Tony's trainers who was showing his trading software to somebody that this was like a wealth mastery, I think it was. And that image of him, Steve, one of his trainers, was I just that's what popped in my mind. It was like coaching, mentoring people. And when that happened, that moment I wrote about it, obviously, for those of you who know, and, and mastering yourself. I just remember the whole like my whole chest, my core, because I was like stressed. My neck mm -hmm. was jacked up and I was like in agony. I felt sick to my stomach all the time because I was like, what am I going to do with my life now? And uh, and when I, that came to my mind, I was like, I'm going to coach people, I, you know, because my heart had was on a different path, but I my mind hadn't kind of caught up to that or realized it yet. And when I thought about it and I was like, ah, it feels great. That feels like the right mm -hmm. thing to do. It's like I... My whole core became real hot. I had a sympathetic response. I started sweating. My back got really hot where I had, had a lot of tension. And it just like the tension like melted away. It was like acceptance of a new reality. In mm -hmm. other words, I had let go of my model, the world, my belief systems, my whole worldview, who I was, where I was going, what I wanted to do with my life. I'd, it's like that dissolved. It's like I let go of that and ex embraced a new future reality. And when I did that, it's like, and then it's like, I kind of just knew what to do, even though I didn't know the, the specifics of it or how I was going to make my business model work. I just knew I was going in another direction. And so there was a lot of turmoil in my life. And I'm, you know, us guys, if we're going to be in a long-term stable relationship or a marriage or have a family, we want our lives to be stable. And my life was in chaos at the time because I'm selling real estate, I'm selling property, I'm liquidating things, I had all this furniture to sell, we had all this furniture and computers and office equipment and copiers and stuff that I that I had to sell and liquidate. And so that was a process. And so she was like, you know, I want to go back to school and I want to become a chiropractor. And so she's in the UK, we had gone over to, um, what was the the college in Orange City, it's very famous. Palmer Chiropractic. Palmer Chiropractic. Did we, we go looked, there? Yeah, we went all the way over there, looked at it, and for that. <laughs> her her parents were involved and in, you know trying to figure out how because it, it was like it'd be a lot more expensive. Yeah. It was a couple extra years of college for her, so we were looking at like seven years. And I was at the point at that, and it was weird. It was like literally a decade to like the month to where I was like the same situation with my ex wife, where it's like I was going to move to Orlando, and she's like, "Well, I'll only move up there if we get engaged." And I was like, "I don't really feel like I want to get married yet." I'm, but I just kind of like went along with it. And so, and, but internally I was like, it didn't feel right. And it's like, as much as we loved each other, I was not in a place where I was ready to get married or felt I wanted to get married. 
and you were transitioning and I was transitioning. You going through your thing, I was going through my thing, but we, and it wasn't practical for you to come over here and spend an extra two, two and a half years going to school just so we could date or be together. And so, you know, she was going to go to, you ended up going to Bournemouth, right? Mm -hmm, That's it. And, um, so we, we decided to go as unpleasant as it was. We decided that, we were gonna gonna split up, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to do long distance either because I was like, with the amount of schooling she was gonna take, I was like, she'd have like a week or two off during the summer, and mm-hmm. that'd be it. And you know, here I am. You know, from that point on, I went and stayed with my dad for a few months, trying to figure out where I was gonna live, what I wanted to do, how I was gonna start rebuilding my life. And so I was like, I just didn't want to do the long distance thing. I wasn't a place to get yeah. to get married. And so we just stayed friends and we would talk. I don't know. We actually talked quite a bit back then for the first year or two. And then she met a guy in school who was also a chiropractor. And you were with him for like seven, eight years, I mm. think. Then I moved to Finland. Yep. <laughs> don't know why I got back to the cold. But then, um, yeah. But we all stayed in touch. Yeah. It's what it is. These things happen. But you've got to be on a path of what you were happy first of all before you can be in a relationship with anyone. Yeah. That's important. Yeah, neither one of us were in a place where we could really come together and do that, or it, it felt right. Yeah. But the path I chose, the path she chose, it, it worked out for both of us. I think because there's no animosity or anything like that after it as well. That's what made yeah, it we so never, easy. And it's, we never it's fought. Never, yeah. We didn't have, we was, you know, our goals and our values were pretty aligned, so it was just easy to get along with. Again, you can't stay pissed off at somebody that's smiling at you and being goofy like she always is. She's always, and if you're in a bad mood, she's one of those people that tries to crack, crack you up. So that really, if you're going to be in a long-term relationship, it's like that makes it really easy to be with a woman who's just looking for a reason to see the glasses half full and looking for a reason to laugh and giggle and have some fun. I can't imagine like in situations like that, that you have someone, you're with someone that you have such a strong bond with that person, like to the point where like even mentally and physically you feel inseparable but it is true what you guys say when it comes to certain paths in life, like if yours, if you guys have to take your paths in life, you kind of have to prioritize that. And it just really, su- like I said, it just really sucks how people have such a strong bond and then life has life circumstances happen. And it's like it's not like the relationship, you know, you can't really do much about it except, you know, make consider choices and stuff like that i think certainly you also look at your priorities as well and what's right for you at the right time this actually reminds me i don't know if you guys have seen the movie la la land Mm -hmm. where it's basically like the whole movie it's about uh emma roberts yeah emma roberts and ryan gosling they basically fall in love and they both have their passions and you could tell they have such a strong bond and like they're inseparable but it got to the point where, from what I remember in the movie, because the last time I saw that movie, it was in theaters. So that was like years ago. I remember in the movie seeing that they had their different paths in life. And, you know, as the protagonist, you want, you're shipping them. You want them to be together. But at the end of the day, they did what was best for them. And they succeeded. You know, you could tell they still have that love for each other. But they had to do what was best for mm-hmm. them. You know, like I said, it just really sucks. But if you have to do what's best for yourself, but you can't have no choice. When you love somebody, mm-hmm. you want them to be happy, yeah. even if it's not with you. And I was happy for her. I, mm-hmm. I remember we used to Skype with you and, and your boyfriend we were in college and we would just shoot the shit. He was a cool guy. Yeah. Have fun. I would tell him what I was doing and they would tell me what they were doing, what school was like. I was. That's I didn't want to. The last thing I wanted was anything to do with college because yeah. I hated college. But that's a, quite a unique situation, isn't it? I don't think many people can do that because I wouldn't do that with many of my other yeah it's very it's like I think it's very separation difficult. two different yeah. countries as well it's different um, yeah but I've always valued him he was always very important to me they're an important part of my life and I was at an important time of your life so I think there's always been a value there and I've always had a lot of respect there so I think that's what carries things through as well so there's literally 7.7 7 billion people on the planet if I have the number uh correct or more or less 7.8 now Okay, so I was pretty Globalists close. Globalists don't like that. Yeah, so I was pretty close. And it's not every day you find someone that you have a really strong connection with. Mm. Okay, granted, like, it is a lot of people, but 
there, like I said, there's a lot of people on the planet, but for all I know, you might also find someone that you have a strong connection with and they live all the way in like India for all I know. So it's really hard to find that. It's not every day you get to find people like mm -hmm. that. It's just like, um, I feel like, um, uh, people, you meet people, different people in your life that feed your soul, whether it's love or it's uh, friendship, companionship, whatever it may be. You find different people in your life's journey that feed you and you can feed them as well. Yeah, like that's like one of the things I liked about Jade when I met her instantly. She's like just like Katie in that response respect that she's always goofy and laughing and even if she's having a rough day, she's looking for a reason to crack up and smile and crack a joke and not be upset even though she may be feeling like crap on the inside. So again, yeah. it's you can't get mad at somebody who's always making silly faces at you and saying funny things or stay <laughs> stay mad at them. It really helps. It's a, you know... It, Just that's try what, not to make us money, funny things. I know. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, it's, it's okay. okay.